While we've learned the basics of work, energy, and power in AP Physics 1, how do these concepts function in AP Physics C problems? Like AP Physics 1, AP Physics C will still be dealing with the same types of energies and concepts like work and the conservation of energy. If you need to review these concepts, please see my AP Physics 1 video on the topic before continuing to watch, as all the following properties and equations will build off these fundamental ideas. The first thing we need to do is redefine the concept of work. While it still represents the parallel component of a force applied over a distance, the way to notate this in calculus is by the integral of the dot product between the force and infinitesimal displacement vectors. In other words, for any path taken, this equation sums up the products between parallel force components and small distances along this path. With this small change, we can dive into a concept you may not have touched on in AP Physics 1, conservative versus non-conservative forces. Essentially, a force whose work done only depends on the start and end positions and not on the path taken is considered conservative. For example, the force of gravity on this apple is conservative because the work done on the apple that falls 1 meter straight down versus one that flies 1 meter up then down 2 meters, or any path for that matter, is still the same. In contrast, a non-conservative force, the most common being the force of friction, does different amounts of work depending on the path taken. Because the force of friction always opposes the motion of an object, its direction can actually change depending on the path taken. So, for an object that sits still, for example, the work done by friction is obviously zero. However, the same object pushed along a circle, which ends at the same starting position, will still experience a work done by friction equal to the force times the circumference of this circle, or the distance of the path, which is not equal to zero. For conservative forces, specifically for force fields such as gravitational, electric, and magnetic fields, there is a potential energy function for these forces equal to the negative of the integral of the force and distance. While this is in reality just the negative of our new work equation, the negative sign corrects the equation so that moving objects against these forces, like lifting an object against gravity, should increase the potential energy of the object, not decrease it. Another fascinating equation that's directly related to this potential energy function is that the forces that produce these potential energies, like the gravitational potential energy, are just the negative derivative of the potential energy function. More specifically, each component of this force can be calculated by taking the partial derivative of the potential energy function with respect to the component, which simply means taking the derivative assuming the other two components are constant. Lastly, one final rewriting of some AP Physics 1 formulas are the power equations. While we learned it to be the rate of change of energy, or the product of force and velocity, the more accurate equations are the derivative of energy with respect to time and the dot product between force and velocity. With all these concepts, some revised and some new, explained, this exact same process for solving energy problems from AP Physics 1 still holds, taking the snapshots at two different points in time and writing the energy equations based off of them. When energy is conserved, equate the two snapshots situations, and when it's not, include the work done between the two snapshots, remembering to apply the new calculus equations we learned in this video. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about the calculus versions of work, energy, and power.